So a few weeks ago, I made a post on what I consider being the most critical step in aligning a Raman spectrometer, and that is getting the correct laser alignment with the spectrometer. That's really the thing that can make the difference between a working spectrometer and something that doesn't work at all. And you have been many to struggle with this issue, so I decided to make this video to really go through the complete process of laser alignment in detail. So there are many reasons you may want to align a laser beam. You may be interfacing with something like a spectrometer. You may be folding your system using a mirror because it will be way too long without the mirrors. Or you may be using dichroic mirror to separate the different wavelength of your system in something like Raman or fluorescent spectroscopy. And on to align the, the laser beam, well, let's imagine that this barbecue skewer is a laser beam. It has some orientation in space. I can move it up and down and left and right. And I can also completely move the, the beam, offset its position up and down and left and right. So to define its position, I will use two apertures like these and make the laser pass through the two apertures. And we see that moving one of the aperture up and down or left and right will tilt the beam, while moving the two aperture together will shift the beam position in space. You will also see that rotating the aperture has no effect on the beam, uh, as the same as getting the two aperture closer together, it's not changing the beam as well. So we'll do exactly the same with our laser. Our laser can be tilted and moved in space, and that will define some uh, orientation and position of the overall line of the laser. So in total, you have four degrees of freedom. I will take back the barbecue skewer so that you can see it. You, have, you can move the first aperture up and down, left and right, and move the second aperture up and down and left and right. And we saw that the other degree of freedom, the rotation is no effect, such as getting the two aperture closer together has no effect as well. So we have four degrees of freedom and you can do anything you want as long as you have these four degrees of freedom to align your laser. So we could use, in theory, something that would tilt the laser and move it laterally, but if you check at Tor Labs, this kind of system is uh, relatively expensive. So it's more convenient to use systems that are based on uh, mirrors. You, you will use two mirrors like these mounted on kinematic base. It's really important to use a kinematic system where you have fine adjustment of the mirror position, because if you use these traditional post like this one, you are not getting any fine adjustment at all, so it's very coarse. If you compare with Raman spectroscopy, you would expect to need at least 0.05 degree accuracy and even better than that, you are never going to do that with um, something like this. Also, you see that I only have one degree of freedom here. It's not enough to be able to do the alignment. So just like for the barbecue skewer, I will use two apertures to define in space the orientation and position of my laser. These apertures are um, frosted glass disc so that I can clearly see the laser beam and they have a 1.5 millimeter hole at the center. So how do we do in practice? I will set the aperture in place and this will define the mechanical axis through which I want my laser to pass. Now I will set my laser. Okay, it's secured. And I will use two mirrors. So you don't necessarily need to use exactly two mirrors. You could use one mirror and put tilt or uh, offset position on the laser itself. As long as you have your four degrees of freedom, that's fine. Also, it's recommended to uh, keep at roughly 90 degrees angle when you fold the beam, just for clarity purpose. But also, if you use dichroic mirror, they have properties that are defined at 45 degree incident angle, so you want to stick to roughly 90 degrees reflection when you are using dichroic mirror. Also, it's recommended not sending the beam 
up in space, that's for safety purpose, to protect your eyes. And you're basically left with two configurations. You have the U configuration, which is the configuration I'm using here, so it says a U shape. And you also have the zigzag configuration, that's where the laser is placed the other way around, and we would uh, put the mirror like this. So that does, um, so that does a, a zigzag uh, shape. So I will go back to my U-shaped configuration. What I want to do first is to do some course alignment of the system. Um, if you are using a machine CNC plate like I do for most of my projects, you will be really close to the final adjustment target and you don't need this uh, course alignment. So I really recommend if you can afford it to have some kind of CNC facility at your lab to pre-machine these holes. So I will switch on my laser. First, I will try to go roughly at the center of my first mirror. That's for convenience. And then I will shift till these two until I get my signal. So that's very close to what I would like to achieve. So I will secure my mirror. And now using the first mirror, I will adjust the position on the laser on the first aperture. And using the second mirror, I will adjust on the second aperture position. And you will do this iteratively, so it's going to take just a bit of time, but that's really a matter of even sometimes less than one minute to do the proper adjustment. So I will bring it close to the hole. So you see that one issue that you may face is your laser beam being way too large compared to the aperture you're passing through. And it's basically impossible to do any kind of precision work. And I think most people who have issues with the starter edition of the Open Raman Spectrometer, it's because of that. And for that reason, I made these uh, auto-centering uh, sleeve with a 1.5 millimeter diameter aperture on top of them. You can download them on my Patreon page if you are a premium member and make it yourself using any kind of 3D printer. So I will put this aperture on top of the laser. It will restrict the beam diameter and now we can clearly see a very nice beam. Now it's centered here and we are perfect on the second, small adjustments on this one. And that's it. So we now have a laser beam that is exactly going through these two aperture. So we have a laser that's aligned with the mechanical axis defined by the two aperture. I think that's relatively easy once you know the trick, but I've seen many people, even at professional level, struggling with this uh, laser alignment technique. So it's really important that you keep a strategy and you use the strategy, other else you will spend days trying to get any signal at all and it's basically impossible to do any kind of precision work if you are not doing it well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, join us on Patreon uh, and see you in the next video.